Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to solder and desolder electronic components and we're gonna focus on a switch mode power supply motherboard or a flyback power supply. So let's get started. So basically we're gonna see an overview about the switch mode power supply motherboard. So this is the first component is the power connector, then we have the fuse and then we have the VDR as you can see. Okay, here we have the capacitor, basically this is for protection and over here we have an electromagnetic interference. Okay, here as you can see we have four diodes, basically these four diodes are the bridge rectifier okay this is the rectifier or bridge rectifier here we have double capacitor or double filtering capacitors and over here we have the ic the integrated circuit or oscillator here we have the transformer as you can see the transformer that connects between the primary stage and the secondary stage here we have the Schottky diodes, so these diodes are Schottky diodes. And here we have capacitors, as you can see. Basically, this is electrolytic capacitors or filtering capacitors. And at the end, we have the voltage or the output voltage. So basically, the output voltage can be 5 volt, 12 volt, etc. As you can see here, as it is marked here in the motherboard we have the output voltage okay here basically this is the opto isolator or optocoupler okay so this optocoupler connect the secondary stage to the primary stage basically the optocoupler is the control component that adjusts the output voltage so if there is an issue in the output voltage the optocoupler can adjust it here, as you can see, in the back of the motherboard, as you can see, we have many terminals. Basically, we're gonna solder and desolder this component based on these terminals, as you can see. So, let's get started. So, we're gonna disconnect or desolder this component first. This is the fuse, as you can see here. So, basically, the fuse contains two terminals. So let's check, as you can see here, in the back of the motherboard, we have two terminals. So we're gonna desolder this fuse. So of course, we're gonna use the soldering iron and the pump, okay? So as you can see, this is the method that we use to desolder the soldering. As you can see, now we remove the soldering paste in the first terminal. Let's remove it in the second terminal. As you can see, now we can remove the fuse easily. Of course, don't forget to clean the soldering iron always before and after in order to keep it in a good state. So as you can see now, the soldering is removed. We can now remove the fuse easily. As you can see, the soldering is removed. So let's remove the, the fuse. As you can see, the fuse is removed. Of course, the fuse is not a polarized capacitor. You can connect it to the motherboard regardless of the direction. It's not like the capacitor, like the electrolytic capacitor. For the electrolytic capacitor, for example, you should pay attention to the polarity, to plus and minus. But for the fuse resistor, but for the fuse, for example, the fuse is just like a resistor or inductor. So let's solder back this fuse so we can just play, we can just bend these two terminals in order to keep it fixed to the motherboard and apply the solder. So let's solder back this fuse. So of course we're gonna use the soldering iron and the soldering wire so as you can see just we will apply just a little bit of soldering now we solder the fuse successfully as you can see then we should clean the soldering iron 
Okay, so if you don't clean your soldering iron, it will not be serviceable 100%. So now let's pass to the next component. For example, let's disconnect or desolder this component. Basically, this is a capacitor. This is a ceramic capacitor. Okay, so this is a ceramic capacitor. Here we have its terminals. Of course, it contains two terminals. So let's use the same working principle. Of course, we're gonna use the soldering iron with the pump. Now, as you can see, we remove the soldering in the first terminal. Let's do the same for the second one, as you can see. Then, always clean up. Now, the terminals are free. We can now remove this capacitor easily, as you can see. So we can now remove this capacitor easily as you can see so let's solder it back as you can see here we have two holes okay so without the pump the soldering pump you cannot make the solder the desoldering operation easy for you so the soldering pump is a very important tool that every technician should have okay as you can see so let's connect back this capacitor and solder it back to the motherboard also the ceramic capacitor doesn't have the polarity okay it's not a polarized component you can connect it as you want but as i told you before for the electrolytic capacitor you should pay attention to the polarity or plus and minus so let's bend a little bit these two terminals in order to make it fixed to the motherboard and then apply the soldering as you can see so now we solder the first terminal let's do let's do the same thing for the second one as you can see just apply just a little bit of soldering iron and then clean up and then clean up your solder so as you can see basically so as you can see the soldering is a good soldering as you can see exactly like the original one as you can see do you see exactly like this one like original one so this is the way or the method that everyone should use to solder the electron component just apply a little bit of soldering wire okay so let's Desolder another component in order to go deeper into understanding how to solder and desolder. So let's desolder another component. So let's desolder this diode. Basically, this is a Schottky diode. Okay, so this is a fast diode or a Schottky diode. We find this kind of diodes in the output of every flyback power supply or motherboard so here we have the diode terminals as you can see we have two terminals over here so let's desolder it using the same working principle as you can see we have the diode here the symbol of the diode means here we have cathode okay and over here we have anode so let's desolder it here as you can see here we have cathode and here we have anode okay so this basically this white mark means the cathode the cathode basically is the negative terminal and the anode is the positive terminal so let's desolder the first terminal using the same working principle as you can see we remove the soldering in the first terminal let's do the same thing for the second terminal using always the soldering iron and the soldering pump so as you can see now the terminals are free we can now remove the diode sample as you can see okay but so for the diodes you should respect the cathode and the anode you cannot connect it randomly no the cathode should be connected in its place so let's connect back this diode and solder it back to the motherboard to diode so let's bend these two terminals as 
I told you before, in order to, to make the compound fixed to the motherboard, in order to simplify the soldering. So now let's apply a little bit of soldering wire. Okay, always using the same working principle, just a little bit. And of course, you should hold the soldering iron about 3 or 4 seconds. So, as you can see, now the diode is connected to the motherboard. This is basically a good soldering connection, as you can see. Okay?